you don't have to look very far to find a guitar player in the state of Tennessee. Almost every other person you know plays a little bit. And here on Tennessee Crossroads, we've met a lot of craftsmen who make guitars. But you have to look a little harder to find someone with a passion for playing and making banjos, especially like the craftsman Ken Wilshire spent the day with in Somerville. With their intricate detail, domestic as well as exotic woods, and fancy tooling, these incredibly beautiful musical instruments are the creations of an amazingly talented craftsman. In fact, they're almost like exquisite works of art for display only in the finest galleries. But these are George banjos, and they're made to not only be admired, but to be played. They're ready for picking and strumming and simply brightening up people's days. I guess that's why they call it picking and grinning. Well, each one is unique in how it sounds, looks, and feels, and this is precisely what has driven Tommy George of Somerville for over 30 years. I love to play. I love to hear them sound. I, I, I like to see uh, the the people we make them for, the enjoyment uh, that comes from that, it's, uh, they look at it and they go, wow, you know, uh, I, I can't, can't go buy one off the shelf like this. And they've been made one at a time by Tommy, who has an electronics background, as well as a tool shop full of woodworking skills. He's always been inspired by his musical family and lured to the banjo by its warm, happy sounds from an early age. I remember watching uh, TV at my uncle's house uh, when I was uh, very young and uh, there was uh, a flat scrug show was on and uh, when they were on TV and I, I remember those. Uh, and maybe my, my uncle, my father, uh, sister and, and uh, all kind of played. So I wanted to play something too. So I, uh, I, I don't know, I just, just all of a sudden said, hey, I want to play banjo uh, one day. Then uh, working on them and making them, and uh, it, it's all part of woodworking, which I would have a background in woodwork. So it's, uh, it's, it's all fun. So along with his passion to play and his desire to fully understand the banjo's humble beginnings and earthy evolution, Tommy is keenly aware of his responsibility in continuing his craft while striving to create the perfect five-string, four-string, or banjo ukulele for each and every customer. You start with good parts, you end up with a good banjo. Uh, that's just it. And uh, the workmanship comes into, into play, the ease of play and the shape of the neck. I guess that's just it. It's just, just a combination of, of metal and wood and uh, good parts. And you end up with a good banjo uh, that way. Uh, we don't do assembly line, we make them all one at a time. As you can see, Tommy's not only modest, he's a very personable fellow as well, but he's always worked alone. However, one day he met a musician who shares his passion for this grassroots instrument. His name is Christian Stanfield. He and his wife Vera play vintage American music, but when he and Tommy met, there was more harmony created than the harmonics of a banjo. I need a cutter. Okay. He's learning a lot. He's, he's you know, come from, from nothing to, he can make a banjo. And he knows he's got an ear, he's a musician. He can uh, hear what it should sound like, how it should be played. He's a great asset uh, and, and he gets us work. He's, he's brought repair in, he uh, knows people that sees him playing and they want to play a banjo so we we build one for him. There's something about you know just making stuff with wood you know taking taking a piece of lumber you know something that looks like this you know but bigger you know just and uh, and 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 drawing out a pattern and cutting it and hand shaping it down and winding up with a banjo neck or something that looks like this you know obviously and I'm a player I have a I have a passion for playing and um, I often I felt like there's a difference um, as a player, if you've built your own instrument, kind of like in Star Wars, you know, you had to make your own lightsaber to be a Jedi Knight. And I feel like to be a really good picker, you know, to be a really good old time banjo player, if you can actually make your own banjo, that just, you're so much more invested in it. 
The older the wood seemed like, the, the better the sound. The rims we make out of maple, because maple sounds better for rims. The next can be uh, walnut or maple. Maple sounds a little brighter, walnut sounds kind of medium warm. So you can actually make a banjo and change the tone from the start with the different kind of woods and metals you use. You can kind of predict the way it sounds from, from the start to some degree. And once it's finished, there's just something compelling about a banjo, especially a George banjo, that certainly captured my attention. Tommy, you said it takes a lot of practice to play a banjo, and you put a lot of work into this instrument, and the pitch and the craftsmanship is just impeccable, but uh, can you teach me a, a lesson on, uh, like, Doug's tune or something? Sure. Here we go. Well, Ken, it just takes practice, practice, practice. I figured you were going to say that, so uh, let's practice. Okay. Well, it wasn't pretty, but it sure felt good to hold and play a George banjo. And this is why Tommy and Christian do what they do. It's good to know it, it comes together and it sounds good and it plays good. And if I'm happy with it, uh, you're going to be happy with it. But it's a fun instrument. Somebody said that uh, you can't play a sad song on banjo. And I guess that's true too, so they're just fun. Mm -hmm. 